Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be another landscape done in a combination of pastel and colored pencil. It's going to be loosely based on a mountain in Serbia. Let's start. The reference is going to be in the description. And the first thing I'm going to do is sketch out the shape of the mountain because I need to work out the composition. I need to decide where the mountain is going to be, how big it's going to be, how much of this central portion of the paper it's going to take up, etc. The drawing is going to be done in two stages. In the first stage I'm going to work with pastel and pastel pencils. And in the second stage I'm going to work with colored pencils. Between those two stages I'm going to apply clear gesso, a primer that's going to fix the pastel and also provide a rough tooth that will allow me to work with colored pencils and add lots of details on top. The reason why I'm using this combination is because I want to use the advantages of both. I didn't really like the shape of the lower part of the mountain or how big it was so I decided to put some of these slopes a little bit lower down so that mm, the mountain would take up more of this middle part of the paper uh, because if I didn't do that I would have too much of the foreground so this way the composition is going to be roughly divided into three parts into three thirds of more or less the same size the top third is going to be the sky and that's what I'm going to do with pastels I'm going to start with this lighter blue sky blue pastel uh, pastel pastel stick I'm going to put down enough material so that I can blend but I'm going to add a touch of white here at the bottom because I want that lower part near the horizon to be a little bit lighter. At the top I'm going to add a little bit of this darker blue. This is a, something like a middle phthalo blue I suppose. And hopefully once I mix those three I will be closer to the color of the sky that I'm trying to achieve. Right now there's a lot of dust here, lots of pastel dust. That's because I'm working on regular paper. This is, by the way, Fibriano drawing paper, about 200 GSM. And uh, I'm only going to apply clear gesso later. Right now I'm just going to work on this regular paper and I'll still be able to get a nice little underdrawing there where I'm going to block in all of the colors that I'm going to need. And once again, the reason why I'm doing this uh, in pastel and then switching to color pencils later is because pastels are easy to blend. It's easier to cover large areas with them. I'm going to add a touch of this uh, dark uh, um, ultraviolet, uh, uh, ultramarine rather, uh, pastel. It's a uh, it's a woodless pastel pencil but it's a little bit harder so I just decided to create some pastel dust by sharpening it because I thought that it would be easier to blend and I'm going to put that at the top because I want this top part of the sky to be a little bit darker. So in terms of the brands I'm using all kinds of brands. I'm using Kohinoor soft pastels, Kohinoor uh, pastel pencils and these master touch woodless pastel pencils. There's going to be some clouds here, so I'm making this part of the sky a little bit lighter by dabbing on it with a kneaded eraser to remove some of the pastel dust and to prepare those areas because I want them to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to work on top of that a little bit more with a pencil eraser. I'm not saying that this is what the clouds will look like eventually, I'm just sort of making sure that I'm reserving a little bit of that lighter space here. Now I'm going to work on this lower part of the drain and I'm going to put in some warmer tones. 
So I'm using this ochre for the foot of the mountain as well as the top because the at the top there is some dry grass which is of yellowish color and it's also going to be lighter because it's facing up it's exposed to the light source here in the foreground we're going to have some slightly more reddish and brownish tones so I used a little bit of this uh, what is this this is something like a burnt ochre I suppose I don't really know how these colors are uh, called or designated in the Kohinoor range I'm just telling you what they look like to me the side of the mountain here is going to be kind of like a light grey so I'm putting in a little bit of grey a, a little bit of grey soft pastel and I'm going to blend that in I do most of the blending with my fingers because I don't really care too much about the precision in this stage and I need to cover large areas quickly and finally I'm going to add some Indian red here at the bottom Uh, once I do all of that the blocking in stage will be more or less done it doesn't look like much in this stage you have to admit but it doesn't have to now I'm gonna apply the clear gesso this is Liquitex clear gesso it's transparent when it dries this is not gonna cause too much smudging and also I'm gonna apply it in such a way to minimize the smudging and the mudding of colors. I'm gonna work bit by bit, segment by segment, using a small amount at the time and then spreading it to uh, create a thin layer. Spreading it, spreading it evenly to create a thin layer of gesso because honestly you don't really need much of it to create a nice tooth. Clear Gesso is a primer that works really well with pastels and uh, colored pencils. You could also start with Clear Gesso on plain white paper and or any other type of paper and then work with pastels on top of that. That would create a lot of tooth for the pastels. But I sometimes like to use it in between layers so I first put down the pastels so now I'm applying the Clear Gesso and I will work on top of that with a colored pencil. This will do two things. It will fix this under layer or these layers uh, so that they don't smudge, that there is no dust flying around. And once it dries, it'll give me a nice tooth that feels like sanded paper. And I'll be able to put in a couple more layers with colored pencils and create some interesting details, interesting textures and things like that. I'm almost done here. Just a few strokes with a brush and just a little bit of clear gesso here and there. I want to cover everything evenly. So once it's done and once it's dry, I can start putting in the details and refining those layers with colored pencils. I'm going to start working on the sky by using my white colored pencil to draw some of these clouds. Now, as for the drying process, you can't start working immediately. It takes at least 10 to 12 hours to harden properly so that you can work on it. I mean, it feels dry after just a couple of hours but it's not uh, quite hard yet and you shouldn't uh, work on it so soon so the, uh, the best thing to do is to leave it overnight and then tomorrow you can do the second stage which is what I'm doing now so now I'm going to draw a bunch of smaller clouds now if you look at the reference you will see that um, there are fewer clouds in the reference I will add more clouds I want to have clouds on both sides I want to have more of those lower hanging clouds near the horizon so I want to make the sky look a bit more interesting I'm going to keep the same atmosphere in terms of the colors because you can see that this reference is uh, taken in autumn that's why we have those yellowish brownish and reddish colors but the sky looks quite nice and I want to capture that contrast between the bright blue sky and the orangey and the reddish autumn tones down below here I'm drawing some of those smaller clouds which are further away and closer to the horizon 
And of course, I'm softening them a little bit with a tortillion. I'm, I use just plain paper tortillions because on this surface, on clear gesso, what you'll notice is that colored pencils behave a little bit more like pastel pencils because they're easier to smudge, they're easier to blend. And the surface is so rough that it grinds on the pencils, creating more of the residue. So I'm creating a nice little group of clouds and I'm adding some more clouds on the left side as well. Just for the sake of symmetry, I suppose. But so far I'm pretty happy with the way this is coming along. And where I feel like the clouds need to be a little bit fluffier, I just fluff them up a little bit using a tortillion. So that's pretty much it for the sky. Now I'm going to work on the mountain, and this top part of the mountain, as I've already mentioned, is going to be kind of ochre in color, but I will make some parts of that top a little bit lighter with, a, with an ivory color pencil. Because it is, after all, exposed to the light, it's facing the, the sky, so it's going to be lighter. The sides, or, or, on the other hand, are going to be in the shadow for the most part. Now we're going to have some rocky shapes here, rocky terrain here. But the shadows are going to be kind of cool, bluish tones. So I started with some Prussian blue for some of the darker details in that shadow. And later I'm going to work on top of that with a thalo blue, or with like a middle thalo blue or something, or even a lighter thalo blue. That's going to give me a very nice shadow color. First, I'm working with this Prussian blue that's going to give me some darker shadow shapes. Right now I have a lot of contrast already, but I will modify that slightly. So I'm going in with a slightly lighter color now. <coughs> this is, uh, this is, I think, one of the Thalo blues. <coughs> and I have several of them in the Faber-Castell range. The colored pencils I'm working with, by the way, are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. Now with this a lighter Thalo blue, I made the shadow side a bit lighter in some places and I also removed a little bit of the texture. We're going to have some trees and bushes here on this slope in front. And for that I'm going to use some greenish tones and for, sh for, sh uh, for the shadow areas I'm going to use a little bit of this indigo blue. That's going to give it a little bit of texture. Just modifying the top here <coughs> a little bit and making sure that it looks really irregular because these are jagged rocks on the side so I want lots of these angular irregular looking shapes, rough looking shapes. Now I'm going to continue with the rest of the side of the mountain by drawing some more of those uh, rocky rocky elements on the side of the, uh, of the uh, on the side of the rock or on the side of the mountain the mountain has a very interesting appearance on one side it's uh, the, the slope is gentler and covered with mostly grass and some trees. On the other side it feels cut off like somebody split the mountain with a giant X or something. So like I said uh, the reference is uh, based on a uh, mountain, mountain uh, in Serbia called Stoll Mountain. And the scene takes place in autumn, that's why we have these yellowish rather than greenish colors. So once again I'm simplifying uh, the shadow side a little bit by adding 
this uh, lighter blue on top of the darker one. What I'm doing with this is I'm actually blending the darker blue because when you use lighter colors on top of the darker ones that sort of um, softens that texture and blends it a little bit. But I'm still careful to retain at least some of those darker, deeper shadow areas because that creates a little bit more var variety in that shadow side of the mountain and it creates those suggestions of smaller shapes and cracks that may not seem like much but they will be interesting to the eye of the viewer because they will feel like they're looking at a rough shape that consists of many many multiple smaller shapes that's why I like to go back in and maybe rework some of those shadow areas by adding some more of that darker color at the foot of the mountain there is a wooded area but because it's largely in the shadow of the mountain it's uh, gonna be cooler in color so we're gonna have more of that cooler shadow color and even though the trees are mostly greenish or yellowish they're going to appear more bluish here and I also have these longer lines like shadows being cast from right to left so I'm mixing in a little bit of uh, greenish and bluish tones for, to create some sort of a base color but the base color isn't even everywhere it's kind of varying a little bit in some places there's a little bit more green in others there's a little bit more blue and as a final touch I'm going in with a Prussian blue to add those shadow areas to try to break up that large patch of trees into maybe smaller shapes to create some suggestions of individual um, individual canopies or groups of canopies I want to make some parts of the shadow side of the mountain even lighter and for that I'm going to use a light thalo blue there's always a little bit of reflected light coming from below and uh, that's going to make the shadow side a little bit lighter as well you can see how much easier it is now for, for us to discern some shapes even in the shadow side but we've still retained that nice contrast between the shadow side and the light side and the, over, the overall contrast between the mountain and the background the mountain will stand out nicely against that uh, against that sky now as for the top part of the mountain for the base color I actually used a brown ochre which is much darker than what I ended up with but the trick is that I also went over it uh, lightly with a touch of ivory colored pencil which is much lighter but I didn't want to create all of it I create, uh, I didn't want to cover all of it I uh, covered it partly so that it's creating a little bit of texture on top so that maybe the viewer can feel like this is a grassy area so it's all about trying to create an illusion of detail while at the same time of course remaining focused on the larger contrasts or larger relationships between shadows and lighter areas now I'm just doing some more of these shadow areas on the side of the mountain and you can see here that there are more of these lighter portions on the rocks because more of the rocks are catching light from that light source which is coming from the, uh, the right so the left side is the shadow side the light source is coming from above but also from the side from the right side and that's why some of these rocks which are sticking out are catching light from that light source and casting a shadow to the left there are a couple of more slopes here on the, on the right side these are a little bit further away and a little bit lower down 
I'm adding a touch of white colored pencil here and there to make some parts of those uh, lighter rocks a little bit lighter. And then I'm drawing some more of these shadow shapes on the side and at the foot of the mountain. These are getting smaller and smaller here. To further enhance the contrast, I'm using the darker indigo blue rather than just Prussian blue. The dark indigo is even darker and duller and I use it for some of the darkest details on my drawing. Uh, you can tell that in this part of the scene we're going to have mostly bluish elements and uh, that's why I'm going to avoid using a black colored pencil here. The darkest pencil I'm going to use here is the dark indigo which is a bluish, dark bluish color. But for the most part I'm going to use the dark blush, brush and blue. Now I'm just refining the appearance of these slopes on the right a little bit. Even though they are simpler and further away than the mountain in the center. But the mountain is largely done. I hope you like the way it looks because now we're going to be focusing on the mid-ground and the foreground area. Here, for the mid-ground, I'm going to start working on these slopes which are in front of the mountain. These are a little bit taller, uh, a little bit shorter rather, and a little bit gentler. And there's going to be more bushes and trees on them. Here I'm going to start using some more of these greenish colors. For the bushes and trees because here the colors will be getting warmer and warmer. I will still add a touch of blue to some of them. I'm adding a little bit of Prussian blue for some of the shadow colors and to enhance the texture. And of course at the bottom I can use that same dark indigo to create the shadow area under the bushes. And uh, for the ground, which is mostly yellowish or brownish, I'm going to use uh, burnt sienna, as you can see, and that's going to be creating nice texture. Now I'm going to do another group of trees, another large patch of trees under the mountain. And I'm going to separate these two with a shadow. So I'm going in adding some shadow areas using a dark indigo. And then I'm going to add another large group of trees here. Making them mostly bluish because, again, for the most part, they are in the shadow. I'm also adding a touch of green here and there. Because um, I want to have, you know, I want to be, I want the viewer to be able to discern at least some greenish colors or greenish shapes in there, but I want the bluish tones to dominate. When I add these darker colors on top of that, it does two things essentially. It creates a texture that kind of looks like foliage and it also creates shadows that break these uh, larger shapes into smaller shapes like groups of bushes and trees. Now, as for these elements in the foreground, whether they are bushes or smaller trees doesn't really matter. I will leave that interpretation to the imagination of the viewer. I'm mostly going to be focused on the colors right now because I want the colors to be getting gradually warmer and warmer. So we're going to have a very nice contrast between the those cooler shadows in the middle and the cooler bluish sky at the top and the warmer reddish colors in the foreground. Now I'm adding some shadow under these bushes, kind of separating them um, into multiple shapes and of course adding shadow at the bottom because the light source is coming from above and adding more shadow on the left side because the light source is coming from the right. These are already starting to look fairly three-dimensional and you can start to feel like they stand out above the ground. Now I'm going to add some 
uh, bushes here in the foreground and these are going to be much much brighter much warmer colors maybe I went uh, with a slightly <laughs> too bright and too warm of a color using this uh, orangey color and then I softened that a little bit with this Indian red but I do see some really reddish warmer tones in the in the reference so I'm going to try to imitate that or maybe even exaggerate it, why not? Now I'm adding some suggestions of branches on, on that bush using a brown, color, a brown color pencil, this is a burnt umber because I want to make that shape uh, look a little bit more complex so the closer the objects are to our viewpoint the more detailed they have to appear and because these shapes are very close to us I have to put in the effort to draw at least uh, some of the branches and uh, to break up the bush into smaller segments and give it a little bit more texture because uh, what texture is it's a combination of uh, small lighter and darker shapes or marks that creates an illusion of detail and the more texture you have the more detailed the image appears that's why I want more texture in the foreground and less texture in the background in the foreground here I'm gonna have more of those reddish tones as I already mentioned but I want to mix the uh, mix in some greenish tones as well I want some of the grass and bushes to be a little bit more green others to be a little bit more red like I said, this is an autumn scene, but not everything has to be brownish or yellowish or reddish. We can have some greenish tones as well. So I'm drawing some smaller greenish bushes here. And then putting some uh, reddish and orangey tones. I'm using that... Uh, I, I use that uh, cadmium orange in a combination of, with Indian red and then burnt sienna on top. And for the darker details I used a, a, a brown a burnt umber and a black colored pencil. I'm actually using more of the black colored pencil here in the foreground to create those shadow areas under the bushes. I really avoided using the black colored pencil in the middle and the top part of the scene because I wanted some cooler tones there which were mostly on the bluish side. Here I feel like uh, the, uh, there needs to be more contrast and I can also go with the black uh, because it goes better with these uh, warmer colors to create shadow areas or at least suggestions of shadow areas. There are a couple more slopes to define here on the right and here I'm going to add some more trees like a, another huge patch of trees at the foot of the mountain these are also going to be more or less bluish or at least more bluish than greenish I suppose and maybe a little bit less bluish and a little bit more greenish than the ones uh, to the left because there's more shadow there and then in front of them we're going to have another gentle slope with some more bushes and trees which are a little bit more green but I'm using really dull greens like uh, duller darker greens that's the colors that I'm trying to achieve and you can see how the the under layers that I created with pastels are really working to my advantage they help me a lot because if I were to do all of this with colored pencil it would take much much longer for me to to cover all these large areas with pastels it was very quick it was a matter of minutes 
and of course clear gesso helped me to fix that in place but also to create new tooth that I was going to use to create these uh, new layers and that tooth because it's really rough is actually making my job a lot easier because it, it's allowing me to create these rough textures that kind of look like uh, bushes, foliage, trees, things like that. So I don't really have to work that much to create something that looks kind of detailed but in reality didn't really take much effort to create at all. Because a drawing like this can be done in an hour and a half maybe. Not including the drying period for clear gesso of course because as I've already mentioned you need to let it dry. I'm just going to finish the scene with this right side of the foreground by adding some more of those reddish bushes and grass. And uh, we've established a very nice contrast in colors as well as the values. I really like this combination of colors. I think I even exaggerated some of the contrasts that we can see in the reference. But you let me know what you think. I also do a lot of work for the Patreon, so if you want to see more content and full length videos, if you want to observe what the drawing process looks like in real time, you should head over to my Patreon because you'll find hundreds upon hundreds of videos and hundreds upon hundreds of hours of footage there. Lots of tips and everything else you might be interested in. Here and there I'm going in with that Indian red, just adding some suggestions of different colors here and there. I'm going to put my signature in the lower left corner, kind of hidden among the bushes. And now I think the drawing is done. I hope you like the scene. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos and bye for now.